I asked I asked Rain to uh, to name this uh, this segment. The enemy's blowhole is down. Which I did. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, the party last session. You, you guys, you guys were started off last session in Thunder Cliffs. You, by the way, the previous session of that, you did bypass an entire encounter. There was going to be a, uh, there was going to be one of those invisible stalker things and like a manticore and these two huge giant crabs that were going to attack you, but you uh, passed without trace all the way to the shoreline. So they never even noticed you were there. Um, right. Yeah, but we didn't get the hags either. Right, you never did. You never did go see the hags. You did take care of Gadril, the Reef Reaver, and her brother. Uh, or not? Yeah, her brother, uh, the guy that was that was sick. She had cursed him because he had gone over her head. And after you took care of everything, you really, you know. Once you defeated the Cult of Talos at Thundercliffs, you you have you have managed to disrupt their operations in a major way. And so, because that angers Talos, he tried to murder you all with a tidal wave that just flooded the Thundercliffs and the caves that you were fighting in. And uh, those huge giant crabs I mentioned, you know, now that now that it's high tide, they made their way in. Rain and Fairvax ended up fighting some of them. Uh, Everybody went to the blowhole as the escape plan. Jin, you went yeah. down. You went down into the blowhole. You you shadow ported further into the blowhole downward and ended up in Waterdeep Harbor. Now I'm gonna me and Jin worked out over over the course of the week what exactly happened uh, between that time and you know, a couple of days from then, since you guys have this solution to get out of the uh, plane of elemental water, or the elemental plane of water. Um, so, so depending on what's going on each day and who's back and everything like that, I know where Jin is because we already worked that out. So, we're going to focus on the party of four. Jin, you're going to be playing the part of Doc or Webley. All right. You don't have to play Doc, but you have to play Webley. Sure. <laughs> I'll be uh, back. I'll get a good smoke. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you are going to be Doc. <laughs> All right. So uh, the rest of the party went up from the blowhole thinking, you know, hey, you go up, you get shot out the top, you fly away. Ended up in the elemental plane of water and you guys settled on having the cleric cast Banishment sending you each back one by one. And we, over the course, uh, since then, we've gone over all the rules and the way it's all going to work. And so, Azure, you have one fourth level spell slot. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. All right. And so in between castings, you will need to take a long rest. And you can only benefit from a long rest once every 24 hours, according to the rules. And that long rest can involve no lo- no combat, though in in the rules it says uh, it says no more than one of the eight hours can be spent in combat, which is kind of weird because if you get in combat for an hour, you you've not rested. So, if you get into combat while Azure is resting, um, he either cannot participate or the long rest starts over. And the last thing before we set the scene here, Fairvax, you reached out to your patron and the patron provided you with the information that if you stay put long enough, somebody will find you. Yep. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't helpful enough to say whether it would be good or bad. All right. Anybody got anything before we go ahead and roll initiative on these giant sharks, which were circling the party? So here's a quick question. One of the requirements uh-huh. for someone familiar is a brazier, which I assume we're not going to be able to really do underwater. Correct. So I guess that means Hooters not around. 
I can't change them into something else. Uh, did Hooter go through the elemental plane portal? I would have. He would. I when the water came in, I would have missed him into his little void. He had. That is that is true. Uh, would the same be true of Mox? Mox got killed by that uh, attack in the one room. Oh right, 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 yeah. And since we can't resummon them, we can't make them into an octopus or the piranha or stuff like that. Seth. Yeah, that that sounds pretty unfortunate. <laughs> Darn. Brought it up. <laughs> no, I, 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 I want this to be as, yeah. as you know, I, I guess the term isn't really realistic, but I want this <laughs> to be as, uh. You know, as true to the D&D, as true to D&D as possible. So, taking into consideration what it would take to cast a spell is absolutely the thing that, that I like to rely on you guys for. Because you're the ones looking at the spells and what it takes. So, greatly appreciated. No problem, man. Alright, so, uh, here we are. And you guys have these three giant sharks circling you. They haven't attacked yet. But one of them turns in to do so. And go ahead and let's the, start it uh, off right. We don't have the map yet. Yeah. Oh, right. Darn. All right. Can there everybody see? Yeah. All right. Uh, Jen, can you move Webley's token? Uh, probably. Yes, I can. Okay. I have to right. Everybody give me an initiative roll. <clears throat> I actually rolled good, even though I'm not in combat. <laughs> Sorry, let me zoom in. Powerbell, Fairfax, Azure. I'm getting there. Uh, and Webley. All right. And speaking of being true to the rules. Before we have our first round here, uh, let's re let's go over underwater combat rules per fifth edition. Uh, when making a melee weapon attack, a creature that doesn't have a swimming speed, either natural or granted by magic, is, has disadvantage on the attack roll unless the weapon is a dagger, javelin, short sword, spear, or trident. A ranged, a ranged weapon attack automatically misses a target beyond the weapon's normal range. So you have your normal range and then your max range. So outside of that normal range, you're, you're going to automatically miss. Even against a target within normal range, the attack roll has disadvantage unless the weapon is a crossbow, a net, or a weapon that is thrown like a javelin, including a spear, trident, or dart. And creatures and objects that are fully immersed in water have resistance to fire damage. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Webley, you are up first. Do, do, do. Let's see. So. Hmm. Well. And Webb, this has been past 10 minutes, so he's not, he doesn't have a flying speed anymore, correct? Uh, correct. Uh, so I guess we're just going to stick with an Eldritch Blast on the one who's coming in. Which shark is immediately attacking? Uh, Giant Shark 1. Can you guys see the names, by the way? Yep. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and his hex warrior thing is sorry, I don't know him. I don't know. Uh, he can only do that. Uh, oops, sorry. His hex blade curse has a bonus action. Blah, blah, blah. I can barely hear him. Until you want to have that problem? Oh, me? Yeah. Yeah, you were yeah. kind of muttering. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll try to get my mic closer. Um, yeah, it's yeah, only so, once per short rest. 
Yeah, okay. Hexplate cursed, so he's not doing that. Okay, so he's just gonna blast him. There's the first one. Alright, that is a hit. hit. Yep. Eight and thirteen. That's a hit. Great. Or two. Alright. Okay. Uh, anything else, Webley? Nope. Uh, well, Webley will kind of position himself. He'll swim a little bit to protect the cleric on this side, on the south side. Yeah. I mean, realistically, you guys just got there. So if the cleric did fight in this battle, you know, it, no. it's not taking away from, you know, a no, lot of your uh, long rest then time. Then he'll stay. <laughs> yeah, screw that guy. <laughs> All right. Hammerbell. She will reach and uh, swimming is the same as and <laughs> I mean, like, how fast can she swim? Can she actually make that distance? She can't, right? So an interesting question. She's got walk on water, right? Don't you have that? Yeah. What? So water walking. What does right? that mean in this context? Well, that would be on the surface of the water. Uh, each foot of movement costs one extra foot when you're climbing, swimming, or crawling. So basically, you, you're mean, at she half can't speed. Treat this is like a, a just a general walk in any direction. Correct. Yeah, that that's that's for the surface of the water. Okay. And and in the elemental plane, you know, in, <laughs> at least in my version of it, anyways, there is no surface. All right. Okay. Well, she will. Get close and pull out her dagger and give it a poke. Give it a poke. Well, wow. yeah, that's a hit. Yeah, okay. daggers are useful. Mm, I don't know if she could actually hit again. <laughs> uh, you do have multi attack. Okay. Wow, what is that? Oh, plus eight on that thing. Nineteen plus four plus four. Holy crap. Alright. And you used your bonus action to rage. What else you got? Well, that's all she got. <laughs> Azure. You said this is is or is not taken away from my rest. I actually start to fight. I mean, it's taking away from your rest, sure, but you guys just got there. So it's not like, you know. I mean, each each round of combat is six seconds. So it's, case, it, I, I, wouldn't, so I wouldn't say it's really that detrimental. Just get rid of the shark and rest. I'm thinking I could have swore I had javelins, but apparently I don't. I'll throw a guiding bolt. Which one? Let's go two. Okay, attacking giant shark two. Yeah, that's a hit. Just 13 damage, but next melee attack against Giant Shark 2 has advantage. Or next attack in general. Okay. Let's give it like a weird little symbol here so I don't forget that. Alright, anything else, Azure? That's it. Fairvex. Alright, I'm going to... Let's see, number three hasn't been attacked yet, has it? Has not. Okay. And... Webley and Azure attack number two, correct? Uh, number one. Oh, okay. I attack number one. Bell attack gotcha. number one. Gotcha. Okay. 
which case I'll yeah, back up Azure know. and hit uh, number two then. Okay. Uh, Hex followed by Eldritch Blast. Okay, roll that Eldritch Blast with advantage. That hits. Okay, that'll be eight damage plus an additional two. Right, so that's ten this, total. And then the second Eldritch Blast. Looks like that's going to miss. Uh, go ahead and roll that one with advantage, too. Because you fire both of them at the same time. I'm going to say it gets the advantage okay. of the Guiding Bolt. Let me just roll a second time, then. Yeah. yeah. Alright, that hits. Okay, so that'll be 10 plus 3. So 13 on the second hit. 11 on the first. first. Said 11 on the first? I thought it was oh, 5. Oh, yeah, sorry, 10. You're right. I miscounted. Alright, so 13 plus 11 is 24. Alright, 24. Alright. You blast the shark, and, and, you know, you see the, uh, you're used to seeing blood, like, squirt, or, or just kind of run down something. You're not used to seeing it cloud in the, in the water. It's kind of a Kind of a new thing. Giant Shark 3. Character sheet here. He's going to dive in and attack. Blade. Oh, any other thing? So these sharks get advantage on melee attack rolls against any creature that doesn't have all of its hit points. It's called Blood Frenzy. 24 hits, Webley. Yep. 14 piercing damage. <clears throat> Giant shark number two. Come in and attack Asher. Twenty doesn't hit, does it? Nope. And giant shark number one. Attack Hammerbell. Does a nineteen hit you? Yes. So you're raging, so that's half. So, yeah. so half of ten. the team is nine. 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 All right, Webley. Uh, <clears throat> well. Uh, Giant Shark 3 is on him now, so he will blast that. Uh, he can Eldritch Blast in melee range, right? Um, yes. Actually, I think technically that's disadvantage. Is that right? Because it's a ranged attack. <clears throat> I think he has to have a crossbow expert to get past that. Or like spell sniper or something. Well, no, for for eldritch blast, I think you you don't get disadvantage in melee range. Do, do, do. Range attack rolls get disadvantage in melee, so it has to be an attack, <coughs> not just a spell. It also has to be ranged. Uh, disadvantage on range attack spell versus range spell. Oh Jesus, I don't know. I don't know. What do you want it to be? Disadvantage or not? I, I've I've never played, I've never rolled disadvantage in melee for for casting spells. All right. All right. Okay. Cool. There's number one. Oh, that sorry, hits. this is on Giant Shark three. Yep, I got you. And second one on Giant Shark three. Cool. 
Right, so that's a total of 14. Huh. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's... Uh, so I'd, be happy to run, I'd, I'd be happy to run without it, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've... I've never, uh, I've never played that rule. I, I, you know, it makes sense. I, I would, yeah. Because right. a ranged attack is a ranged attack, so. Yeah, ranged attacks have disadvantage in melee range within five feet. All right. Um, we'll we'll go with these rolls, Jen, and then you know next. Uh, All right. From here on out, ranged attacks have disadvantage in melee range. Cool. All right. Uh, Hammerbell. Bell will continue to assault the shark one. Poke All right. eye. So you have yeah. disadvantage. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And I think this she is... rolls another damage for that. Let me see. Proto critical gives me. Uh... An extra damage dice. Two additional yeah, our... dice. Two additional. Two D D eight. What is D eight? Right? Uh, D four. Yeah, using yeah. Dagger. For a dagger, it's D four. D four. It already rolled the extra die. I know. Uh, I rolled the extra die for the uh, normal crit. This oh, is the normal right. Crit, and this is a brutal crit. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and the second attack. Whoa. Ah, wow! Jeez. Holy crap! <laughs> Brutally crit critically. Yeah, okay. So uh, all right. So that is click what? The, that's 9, 10, 11. Yeah, 13. she didn't click the da click the damage on that second one. You rolled the two, but you didn't click oh. damage. There you go. Let me see. 13 plus 19. 6. That's 19 plus 2 is 21 plus 11 is 32. Holy cow. So she's doing is... you're doing hammer axe damage with daggers. <laughs> awesome. and shark one shark one still up man. still up okay. uh, she's gonna hug yeah. it it's, it's a giant shark alright yeah. she's gonna give it a slash with her elbow that's a hit give it okay hey. so you uh you, you, you grab the shark by the fins and just pull yourself you can't pull it close to you cause it's just so big but you pull yourself close to it and just jam as many of your spikes into its into its skin as possible and you see you see blood kind of clouding around the uh, around it and you are you're just going to you're just going to keep trying to rub your rub your spiky armor against that uh, even even during its turn Azure. I'm going to try something stupid I'm going to do booming blade okay it should still work. I'm just thinking, is it thunder damage? 19. Yeah. Okay, melee attack with a weapon against... Shouldn't be affected by underwater. Spells I have range. a swim speed, but yeah. On a hit, the target suffers and attacks normal effects. Sheath and booming. Moves before then, it immediately takes 1d8 thunder damage. Thunder is sound, huh. isn't it, technically? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's not lightning. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> it moves, you all die. <laughs> no, um, no, no. Uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna use Wonder Woman eighty four rules. If there's lightning and if there's electrical uh, damage in the water, only the bad guys take it. I noticed that too. That was bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so this would definitely work. So booming blade. That's a nineteen that hits. So go ahead and roll your normal damage and then add another two to it please so that's 16 damage and then if it moves it takes an additional four no i'm a higher level it was right now it's eight, uh 20 damage total read the higher okay. level part at fifth level melee attack do an extra 1d8 thunder damage to a target i see i see and that and and the damage target take, target takes from moving increased two d eight. So if it moves, it takes two d eight damage. Duelist, so Twenty damage total. All right. 
who can take out their shark first? Arabelle. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> You're catching up. Fairvex. Alright. Two more Eldritch Blasts at the shark I've been shooting at. Uh, you did... Was it one or two? I think it was two, because I was... Because I had the advantage for that one turn after the Guiding Bolt. Alright, that hits. Five damage. That also hits. And also add uh, three to each attack for my uh, Agonizing Blast. Oh, right, right. So let's I gotta see here. I gotta bake that back in. Six, eight, thirteen. Plus six is nineteen. So another nineteen force damage. I don't know, Hammer Bell. They might beat you on this one. Mm. Giant Shark Three is gonna try and chomp down on Webley. This time, not just not just taking a bite, but actually chomping down, trying to get his whole body in there. All right. That oh, like a hit. Yikes! That is a big jump. You know, it's almost every time Webble is not here, he almost dies. <laughs> yeah. The lightning strike with <laughs> those druids. Um, Webley is Specter, and now this. <laughs> So, so Webley is in the mouth of Giant Shark Three, right? And and also at uh, at zero hit points. Yes. Uh, and Webley's probably giant... gonna auto, probably gonna auto fail these death save if he's in the Giant Shark's mouth. Somebody might want to do something about that. <clears throat> no, no, he he makes death saves as normal. Um. Well, if he's taking damage, I don't know if it's Oh, right. Yeah, it will it, yeah, every time he takes damage, he's got to he, he he that counts as a failed death save. Uh Giant Shark 2. He's going to try and He's going to try and and bite into uh Azure Shield. You know, just try to take the whole thing in his mouth and you know, take it off of him. Does that hit you, Webley? Or, sorry, Azure? 24? Sorry, I was muted. Nope, because I'm going to pop a shield spell. Alright. So just as he's reaching in and, and trying to grab it, that magical shield kind of goes over and... Uh, and, and forces you see the shark actually lose a tooth on the magical emanations coming off of the shield and uh it it recoils in pain you don't fuck up my shield really tried man <laughs> <laughs> all right and this one's going to attack hammer bell 18 hit you take again half of 19 okay. all right webley give me that death save <sighs> oh no oh. that's one down so you guys see this shark just kind of carrying Webley's, you know, body in his mouth and he's unconscious and and it's just swimming around and it looks like it's about to start chomping on him some more and you know that if you don't get him out of there he's he's probably done for. Bell. She's gonna risk it or <laughs> I don't know, can she actually swim fast enough to get to him? Uh, you could make it over there, yeah. 
it, it would invoke an attack of opportunity from this giant shark, but but it would not have advantage. All right, so this shark uh, goes in for a bite. Seven. Hits. Mm. And so, yeah, give me, give me a, uh, give me a strength check. You're gonna. Well, how are you gonna try and get Webley out of that shark's mouth? <clears throat> Grab at his uh, shirt and pull. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh, how far inside? He's a barbarian, so... <laughs> yeah. Wait, She's wait. just gonna pull until half of them comes out. Hey, at least yeah. I got half. <laughs> by, kill by killing said shark. By killing said shark. Oh, okay, she will just... <laughs> give it a stubby stubby, then. <laughs> okay, okay. So give me a uh, give me a strength check. Or at, at athletics or strength, uh, whichever you choose. All right, so you go to grab Webley out of the shark's mouth, and and the shark, uh, you know, it looks like it's about to bite down, and just out of instinct, you shove your dagger in there, and it jams into the shark's gums, and so it 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 kind of it kind of holds its mouth open. Thanks to thanks to feeling pain at biting down, so it holds its mouth open just long enough for you to grab Webley's body and pull him out and kick away from the shark. Okay. Now you you have Webley, uh, you have Webley's arm in one hand and your and your dagger in the other, and uh, Webley will not take damage from that shark chomping down on him this round. And give me a D four. Uh, give me, give me like a dagger attack. Okay. All right, Azure. Okay. So first off, another booming blade on the giant shark. Okay. Ooh. This shark should be dead. <laughs> yeah, give me damage on that. Head. Holy cow. Oof. That's 21 plus 38. 15. Yeah, look at you, Mr. Math. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was pretty <laughs> quick and impressive for math. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you you just you just whack this thing with your mace and your and because you're wearing that mariner's plate, you know you can just swing that mace easily through the water, and you just smack him in the head, and and he just goes floating away in a uh, in a cloud of his own blood. Then go ahead, move forward. This one. Mm -hmm. First off, I'm going to go ahead and do. Healing words, the bonus action. Okay. I'm Webley. We gained a whole six hit points. We enough to bring him back up. <clears throat> yep. That's good. Then I'm going to action right. surge, do a regular melee attack against the giant shark. All right. Oh, that's right. You're not using your mace. You're, you're using your uh, dwarven thrower. Yep. Um, yeah, go ahead and give me damage on that. That hits. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Okay. So you did a melee attack, so I'm not going to count the throne, but uh, 14 damage. All right. Fairvax. All right. I'm going to move closer. And I'm going to use my bonus action to uh, do 3d6 of healing on Webley with healing light. Thank so, you. An additional 10. And then follow that up with a pair of Eldritch Blasts against the giant shark. That hits. Okay. I'm adding, I'm adding, I'm adding three to the bacon that, right? plus three. So. Yeah. Oh, you okay. did you did bake in the plus three there. Yeah, I just That's I just tweaked the formula. It oh, keeps okay, getting nice. reset whenever I level. Oh, uh, okay, I see. All right, so that's a total of fourteen damage, damage. And I'll have Anything to transfer else? my well, I couldn't transfer my hex because I used my bonus action for the healing light, so <laughs> I'll have to do that next round for the extra hex damage. But no, that's it. All right, this shark is going to. going to back off and swim away a little bit. Uh, Azure, you it. can take an attack of opportunity. I'm going to do Booming Blade again. Can you do Booming Blade as a reaction? Yes, I can, because I had the war. Um, there's a feat that lets me do it. War caster. War caster. All right. War yeah, caster. yeah. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll damage. He might. He can't move. That's a really, really Oh, he already, he already has. He's going to. Okay, so, take so go, ahead and, go ahead and give me the 2d8. Additional 2d8? Yep. 5 plus 10 is 15 oh, plus 2d8. My bad. I'll take the first two. It'll be 12. So 15 plus 12 is 27. 27. So he is going to... Shoot out and circle around. Hey, it looks like he's coming back. Giant Shark 1, see, seizing an opportunity, is going to once again attack his little meatball where he's trying to eat. Hammer Bell. Is that hit? <clears throat> yes. What's your AC? 16. Take another 10 piercing. Jeez, hurting and mad. All right, Webley, you uh, you awake to find yourself in Hammerbell's arms. Great, I just have to stand up, so he'll roll over and blast the giant shark. So as 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 Webley wakes up, he sees the shark just munching on Hammerbell, and just you know Hadoukens. Go ahead and roll damage. Four and six. Ready? And yeah, that's what he's got. Hammerbell, you are hurting and mad. Returning the sharp favor. All right, go ahead and roll damage. Eight. Still swimming? Uh, it, it's looking pretty rough. Go ahead and roll damage on that. So another nine. That is going to take care of it. You know, I think I think Val, that would make sense. You can use your uh, disadvantage and advantages. I don't think they don't stack. Right, so 
if you're at advantage and you're at disadvantage. Yeah. It should cancel out regardless. I was going to say that earlier that, uh, you know, the giant shark gets advantage on anything that attacks that, that it attacks that doesn't have all of its hit points. So even if you attack recklessly, you don't lose anything because it already gets advantage. Oh. Yeah, well, and, and you, plus her reckless, I mean, she might as well attack recklessly with her real weapon. Right, right, yeah, attacking recklessly with the uh, with the hammer axe. Yeah. Whenever I think of the hammer axe, I always think of the shotgun axe from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> yeah. Azure, there's one shark remaining. I'm actually going to swim out. I'm going to swim to it and hit it. Oh, that's right. You have your you have your full swimming speed. Yep. Yeah, I'm just going to swim out and hit it. Just... I was looking at some other things I could do, but I think that's the best thing. Sixteen. This thing is on the brink of death. You see, you've knocked out many of its teeth with your hammer. It's uh it's kinda it's kinda twitching as it swims along. It's just trying to be a shark. I'm going to go ahead and do a second wind. Just to cap off my hit points to ignore... I'm on that way he doesn't get advanced against me. All right. I was only down right. two hit points, so I... Yeah, I'm going to go back at max. <laughs> Transfer the hex onto Giant Shark 3. All right. And blast it. Go ahead. That's a hit. Go ahead and roll your second one. Oh, yeah, that's going to kill it right out. He only had two hit points left. So, well, for just how much extra? You, uh, you, you, I guess pink mist. You can't say pink mist. Uh, maroon mist there in the water. Now, before you, before you kill that shark, is there, like, something cool you wanted to say? Or, you know, you're, sh you're shooting a shark from from range, knowing that it's going to die. <laughs> Maybe like, smile, you son of a bitch. This is uh, fun. Yeah. yeah. We didn't, we didn't need a bigger boat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, there you are. Uh, you have you have successfully navigated the waters, or well, successfully fought the sharks that were initially attacking you. Um, you don't see anything right now around you in the water. You have a moment's reprieve. Anybody got a heal anymore? Oh, I'm down to fourteen. Yeah, I can uh, help with that. Well, All right. Webley's, yeah, I mean, Webley's down to 16, but he's not front line. Yeah, well, we should be able to patch a couple people up. So let I mean, me see. Can... Let me double check something. Uh, da -da -da. Fairfax, before you actually cast your spells, let me go ahead and let me burn through my spells. You can get your spells back in a short rest, don't you? Never mind. Yeah, I can do I can do my pair of third levels and get those back on a short rest. Okay. So I'll do I'll do two cure wounds at level three, one for Bell, one for uh, Webley. That's mine. Yeah, yep. I'm gonna assume in order. Yep. Alright. So seven for Bell, fifteen for Webley. Yep. Alright. And then as soon as I get a short rest, I'll have two more available well before you get a short rest mm -hmm. you guys are constantly looking around you know you have all six directions to look in mm -hmm. you know sure. x y and z axis and uh and you're looking around and you do see in the distance 
getting t getting closer are some blurry forms, three of them, moving through the water. Much smaller than the giant sharks. So I'll give you uh I'll give you some time to, to prepare if you felt like uh feel like you, you you know, whatever you would do to prepare for that. Having no idea what these things are. Uh, uh, I mean, Webley can pop off darkness if you think that's going to be helpful. He's got one spell left. I'm got nothing, so ready to go when you guys are. <laughs> yeah, I think we're just kind of. All right. Well, I will hold off on the darkness. You see that there are three. Let's see if I can do this right. Huh? Everybody see that in the chat? Mm -hmm. There are three merfolk yeah. who come to you. Anybody talk to merfolk? <laughs> I don't know if we have anybody who speaks Aquan. Uh, or and, uh, catch all now. Uh, try to look friendly. <laughs> one of them, one of them who was in the back at first. Who, uh, when all three of them approach the party, and they're just kind of looking at you, and you're looking at them, and since nobody immediately fires, this one steps out front, and uh, he's he's kind of a buffer dude, has a has a uh, you could it, it's it's almost like some sort of what would count as leather, but underwater. You know, some sort of the remains of some animal has been twisted into some. Uh, it's probably still technically leather. It just mm -hmm. probably came. From, it's probably shark skin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I just wouldn't know how you would because you can't tan it. You know, in the sun. Well, tanning usually involves chemicals of some sort, so I'm sure there's a way that it could be done. Yeah, it's the equivalent, right? And so he's got that. He's got that like over in this in this little belt. You know, think '90s Deadpool. Who's that? Uh, Dave Liefeld used to put po pockets and pouches on everything. Yep. That across his chest, and uh, and he approaches and and says, "I demand to know if you are hostile." Uh, not yet. Webley, Webley, Webley comes forward uh, since he's super charismatic. Uh, not hostile at all. As a matter of fact, we're looking for a way home. All you we not... want is all we want is to, you know, find our way back home. You have not come around. here looking for trouble. No, no, no. Trouble seems to come looking for us. <laughs> We just we just need a little time, uh, a little time to uh, prepare some prepare some magic to allow us to return to our to where we come from. You fight the enemies. Able to, is that is that something you'd be able to uh, help us with? You fight the enemies of the deep, and you win. Most appear and are eaten. We, we do not know where you come from, but occasionally you show up and get eaten. Not only can you breathe here, you can live here. Yeah, well, we don't find it too comfortable. We'd like to get, we'd like to get back home as soon as possible. You want to live. We, too, want to live. Sounds Would you like help us? 
Uh, help you how? There is a creature. Uh, he looks to the others, and and you see that that they're all trying to discuss what the common word would be, um, and and so he says, ah, the uh, uh you know, they 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 kind of mull over the pronunciation and enunciation of the word, and they say, there is a carcan that is uh, in the in the area. Carcan. Kraken is, is be Kraken, would it? <laughs> Kraken eat eat much, produce little. Uh huh. And yeah. what this reminds you all of, as they as they describe what the whatever Kraken is, um, what what this all reminds you of is Cryovane, the White Dragon, and how. He, when he moved into the area at, at Ice Spire Peak, he kind of ate too much, you know, and, and uh, deprived the, sort of upset the natural balance of things, deprived Roger the, the Manticore of his normal food source and all the cause, all the trouble that that caused. And so you could tell that that's kind of what's going on here, that this whatever a car can is has moved into the area and is eating more of the creatures than his share is and definitely doesn't produce food like some other animals do uh you know we may be able to work out something that's mutual beneficial uh my friends and i are, are quite tired and weary from this battle and are in need of in need of a, a, a rest before we before we attempt to help you with your your problem we have caves we will lead you to them you will rest and then defeat uh, karken they gonna trust these people not to eat us <laughs> so webley we try you know flips around flips around is you know well what say you i don't see a better offer yeah I don't see no i think that's reasonable yeah. all right lead the way we're sort of slow in this uh in this element. thing <laughs> the guy in heavy armor. so yeah so if you could take it slow okay the uh the three merfolk recognizing the power of your armor azure uh each of the other merfolk grab the forearm of whoa what in the hell i didn't know you could do that do what you could actually yeah. grab the outside of the token and flip it over to the other side so I'm not actually just like moving this left and right. I'm grabbing the outside and just flipping it over. It's weird. Anyways. Doesn't uh, look any different to us for what that's worth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so each of the merfolk grabs the forearm of a party member, except for you, Azure, because they understand what your armor does. And they move and they, they, they kind of guide you guys towards their, their village which is really just a series of caves. And there's a small amount of a uh, kind of seaweed that grows nearby, uh, but even it looks very lacking. And so the merfolk, what you're able to gather from their uh, broken common is that a lot of the predators in the area have taken up residence in some caves nearby to where the kraken is living and i just told you it was a kraken we uh, knew it was a kraken <laughs> and and so they 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 say you know thankfully it's only a juvenile so yeah, it's not like a full-blown 
Kraken. It's a it's like a it's like a very young Kraken. <laughs> and uh really didn't want to tell you guys it was a Kraken. Wanted to keep um, you guessing. Card. Um It's okay. So no longer Kraken lacking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you guys get the feeling that that you know the or you guys get the information that the predators have lived in the caves nearby to where the Kraken has taken up shack. And so they can't go and attack the predators for food in their way, but the predators can pick them off in response. And so these predators are only going to grow in number. And eventually uh, this, this upsetting of the balance will mean the end of this particular band of merfolk in the area and it could mean you know once the once the merfolk in this area are, are are eaten and everything gets eaten those predators will have to move to other areas thus upsetting the balance there and move yeah, on beyond this that. is all this is all the plane of water i i can't get too worked up over it <laughs> and so uh and so they're they're you know they're they're saying hey we'll let you rest here but you got to go handle the uh the juvenile kraken once you do that they can reset the balance and uh All if right. you take care of that kraken then they'll let you they'll let you hang out in their village for the rest of the time with no danger to you you can rest cast rest cast rest cast and banishment everybody back to your home plane all right. Can they heal? That sounds reasonable. Well, we can rest before we go. So. Okay. Yeah. So does everybody agree uh, to that? Agree to that deal? Sure. I tried. I I say, do they do they have any way of? I mean, do they know about air pockets in? plane of water i mean if something magical forces all the water away right, then there's going to be i i ask them i ask them is there anything they can do as far as you know a cave that's not full of this water uh they don't really understand they don't they don't really understand because because they're like if there's no water how do you breathe yeah it makes sense <clears throat> okay well the nice thing is, is i can st i can basically just redo the water breathing ritual before it expires so we should be okay yeah okay all Let's right so you cave. so you guys make it to the caves and uh, you settle down, and they 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 show you small small sleeping areas, because that's the safest place in these caves is these little these little small sleeping areas where you can barely fit your body in, but none of the big creatures can actually you know make it in there to eat you while you're sleeping, and so it's kind of uncomfortable and it's super dark and it's super weird. But you're able to finally, you know, take that long rest and go to sleep. Okay. So, with that, uh, let's take a quick break. All right. Sounds good. You guys in a few. Okay. I'll go ahead and put on some music.
That's some mood music there. I'm back. I am also back. So me and Scatter, who else? I'm here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think Webley's going to get close enough. All right. Yeah, but if she's if she's going to rage, she's can use her normal shit. Well, if she used a trident, she wouldn't need to attack recklessly in order to gain uh, regular. Right. Yeah. You know, she not always attacks. Advantage. She always attacks recklessly. I mean, she doesn't have to, but yeah. It would give her advantage, but I don't think she'd do as much damage with a trident as she would a um, with her, the with her, with her um, current thing. But maybe she would. Disadvantage, and then if she's a reckless uh, thing, it'd just be a regular attack, and leaving her. Yeah. Like I said, a trident would give her advantage. Nothing. Well, her, her dagger it. gives her advantage, because it doesn't because she doesn't have disadvantage when she's using the dagger. Yeah, but it's also a, what D eight versus D four. Trident's only D six. D six. Oh, I was hoping for more. <clears throat> All right. So is everybody back? I think, yeah. I think I've heard everybody. All right. Um. So, is anyone worried about tridents? Not really. Not really. Okay. So, the merfolk realize in the morning, you know, after you guys get a long rest, there's not really day and night here so much as just sleep cycles. Uh, they realize once you've come out of your long rest that, you know, maybe they need to sweeten the pot a little bit. And so, they... They tell you that many people end up in the elemental plane of water coming from the common land, uh, coming from your plane. And they... Sometimes they have stuff on them. Oh. And they, they keep that in a treasury. And so they'll let you... Uh, they'll let you pick through the treasury if you defeat the juvenile kraken. Ooh. We can work with that. So basically, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you guys randomly roll on some treasure tables. Great. If you're able to defeat the kraken. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and well, before we head out, cast aid on Webley, Hammerbell, Fairback. What does that do? Plus ten okay. points. Plus go ahead, ten. Go ahead and throw it in the chat. Casting at level three, by the way. That one. Yeah. 
All right. So uh, I think it's also important to notice or to mention um, while the party is is long resting. You know, if this were a TV show or a movie, we would cut over to Jin um, sitting in a bar in Waterdeep, enjoying herself, but also kind of carefully and very thoughtfully looking out towards the shore to hoping that some of her party mates show up. Yeah, she's real teary, teary eyed. Yeah. Mrs. Hammerbell. <clears throat> <laughs> the girls get it done yeah <laughs> alright so you guys head off to find the juvenile car Ken yeah obviously these dudes know where, he, where he's at yep there's one of them that leads you there and says, you know, points to some caves and says, uh, yeah, those those caves over there. Those caves there. Okay. And you see I don't I don't I don't want to overpower this, um, but I just I'm trying to look at Webley's sheet here and he's got on his inventory a uh, potion of greater healing, but He's got 21 of them. and <laughs> I bet that's and, and, simply a typo of when he was either well, reducing it, is, it to yeah. two to one. Either, either he went to two to one or he went from one to two. And he also doesn't have it checked for some reason. But I don't. So can I give him two potions of greater healing? Or do you want me to assume it's two? All right. Does Does anyone else have potions of greater healing? And there's yep. one. Got two. Uh, Jen does. She had two. Yeah, All right. Let's, last, last let's just say two. Session. Let's just right. say you got two. All right. I got one. I probably didn't take okay. too often. All, All right. right. I just that 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 could be useful in this fight. <clears throat> you may want to talk with Doc before next session because I just posted up. You know, like I said, I I only see three Eldritch invocations, and yeah. he have four, and I'm sure how he has a twenty AC because I only calculate eighteen, and he has three proficiencies on saving throws, and I'm not sure how that is. So, all right, I'll uh. So, he should have some more stuff, more of some stuff, and maybe less of other stuff. All right. But anyway, yeah. So you guys uh, approach the caves, and here's the juvenile car Ken. He looks pretty juvenile. Yeah. And let's go ahead and roll initiative. Uh... One, I'll two, three, four, five. Uh, you get advantage, so nine. And let's start by descending. All right. The Kraken goes last. What do you guys do? Azure. Fair blender. Big is this thing? Big. Can uh, if um, Belle enlarge herself, would she be more of advantages? Uh, when you enlarge yourself, you do get. I want to say you get some some more damage. Yeah. Okay. I never use it because I keep forgetting, but I think she could. Target attack, deal an extra D four of damage. And you get advantage on strength checks, strength saving throws. Sounds good. Both. 
Spirit Blender, Action Surge, um, Celestial Salt, Radiant Soul. That'll be it. Wings underwater. <laughs> oh, okay. It's for the extra radiant damage. Yeah. Got it. All right, Webley. Uh, I don't think Webley has any need to move. Uh, yeah, I think he can just <clears> blast <throat> from here. From here, although. Six blades curse. What's the range on this? Eldritch okay, Blast what's... range is, uh, I want to say it's 120. Yeah. He is going to. He is going to cast Phantasmal Killer. That's 120 feet on the Kraken. Drop that in the chat, please. I think it's the first time we've used this spell here. I think he used uh, it once on something else before. Yeah, he used it. Uh, a Rayburn, or whatever it was. I think. Uh, let's see. Let me drop. Let me drop it in the chat. Uh, I like the second uh, roll better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like it's happened in the nightmares of a creature you can see within range of creating illusory manifestation. Wisdom saving throw. Yeah. On a failed save. Yeah. Uh, hold on one second, guys. Oh, my reading that correct. He has to make a save to begin with. Yeah, and, and that's not. just for the fear. I think then that's just the for the fright. End of turn makes another save for the damage. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And it could it could do forty ten every round, assuming he keeps failing saves. Although, you know. All right. Let's see. Wisdom saving throw. Is that right? Wisdom for the frightened. This is just for the it, the way we're reading this is it looks like it's two wisdom saves, but the first one is just for a is he frightened or not? Uh, he is not frightened. And then at the end of at the end of each of his turns, he has to make another wisdom save or take damage. If he makes that second save, the spell ends. Okay. Well, uh, he has immunity to being frightened. Oh, okay. But at the end of his turn, he will make that wisdom save. Just remind me. Okay. Uh, and Webley will dog paddle up to here so he's not in line of something. He oh, okay. Breath weapon or something. I don't know. All right. Cool. And hammer good. bell. <clears throat> bell will enlarge itself. And, uh, she will move forward. Let's see how far she go. Maybe just taunt it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <clears throat> she's probably gonna try like a, a light crossbow in it just to get his attention. Might as well. Oh, is that the spell? No. Uh, what, what's what's the range? Action, so. uh, what's the range on the crossbow? Eighty. Are we doing? We're doing half speed, right? So thirty feet is basically oh. a move and an action. An action. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would yeah. be your so dash. She, she's out of her. Yeah. So, I'm just gonna wait. Alrighty. Fairfax. Cast tax on it. Hold on. Let me... uh, I gotta get closer to cast tax. Because I need to be 90 feet away. 
So I'll move forward. Like that. Because I think... No, I can only move that. 15 feet. Which puts him in range for Hex. And then Eldritch Blast. Alright. That is a miss. Alright. Second one. Oof. Oof. Okay. That is also a miss. Alright. The Kraken. Unleash the Kraken. Swim speed of 60 feet. It rushes out to Hammer Bell. And it is going to. Oop. Wrong thing. You know what? He's going to start off strong. He's going to attack Hammerbell with Lightning Storm. So well, in this case, the full the the like the full size Kraken would make a Lightning Storm. This one, this one just does like one Lightning, one Lightning Bolt. So, uh, Hammerbell, make a DC 18 Dexterity saving throw. All right, then you take 19 lightning damage. 19. But as he had AIDS, that helped. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Preemptive healing. <laughs> All right. And Azure. I had to swim four, but yeah, I can only make it this far. Put some in the blender. In the blender, yep. I'm going to go ahead and throw up my spiritual weapon. And smack him with that bonus action. Okay. Oh, Kraken also needs to make his wisdom. That is your reminder. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, right. Yeah, his, his wisdom save. DC 17. All right. So he succeeds. All right. That spells Bell's over. Yep. 19 to hit. Uh, that is a hit. Okay. And go ahead and spike that with my radiant damage additional. No, there's two because I guess dueling doesn't work. Um, but radiant damage additional nine damage. Fourteen. Fourteen. Yep. All right. Uh, the Kraken as a reaction is going to wrap a tentacle around you. Ooh. <clears throat> yes, he does. Well, that's fine. You don't want to escape anyway. Damage kind of... Yeah. I think he's going to hit every time he hit. All right. So you are grappled and restrained, unless you can uh, do a strength check of DC 20. Right. Webley. Uh, Webley will move, move uh, a little 
Yeah, I take the damage too, don't I? What's that? I take that damage, don't I? Yeah, 19 damage. Um, I gotta make yes. I gotta make a constitution save. Spells up. Constitution oh, save. yeah. Con. Man, all you have to make it do is a con 10. Yep, and... Damn. All right. This is not starting off well. <clears throat> <laughs> the uh, Webley will cast Blight. No. Yeah, he will. He'll cast Blight on him. So, do, do, do. Oh, sweet. Fail that con save. Holy Probably. cow. Still, still, it's a good 22 points. Even if he fails. All right, twenty-two. Yeah, that's a solid hit. All right, he's taking that damage, and that's what Webley's doing. Well, let me make sure here that he would only have con plus ten. So minus four to that. Yeah, let me let me real quick uh, change these. I I forgot to change these from the kraken to the juvenile kraken because I didn't have the juvenile kraken in my in my stupid uh, thing. All right, so strength is plus twelve. Yeah, if he's saving a full kraken, we're not gonna. Yeah. Ever touch him. All right. So he would have failed that. Yeah. So I'll subtract another 22. I suppose his attack went down too by any chance, did it? Solid hit. Yeah, that's a very solid hit. So did his attack Anything else, Webley? No, his attacks were his attacks were were calculated correctly. I just didn't change his saves. Uh, no. Webley is cool. Alright. Bell. Okay, Bell will rage. Um. So, tell me again, if she's reckless, she gets normal If you're attacks? reckless, you can, you get, and you attack with your normal weapons, it's, it's in a normal attack. You don't get your yeah. advantage, but you don't get disadvantage. Okay. If you were to reckless with your hammer axe, then you, uh, then you just roll normally. Okay. Just making sure. I will give that a try. That's a hit. That is not a hit. Okay. <laughs> All right. So negative eleven damage. All right. And as a legendary action, it's going to try and wrap a tentacle around you. Oof. Wow. Ooh. Ouch. You raged, right? Yeah. Okay, sweet. So 27 bludgeoning damage cut in half. And okay. give me a uh, give me a strength check of DC 20. take that off. Uh, 13 or 14. 13 points, yeah. Depends on whether it's round up or round down. Yeah, it's round down for damage. Okay. You get, but you get, since you're enlarged, you get, uh, you get, uh, advantage, advantage on, on your strength check. Nice. Ooh, breaks free. You're able to, you're able to get out of the grapple. So, Azure is the only one grappled. Oh, uh, did you want to spike spike attack him as well? Nope. She got, she used her. Oh, she raged. She raged. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Fairvex. All right. I am going to throw a guiding bolt at it. That's a hit.
That is, what, 23 damage? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll take it. <clears throat> Alright. You guys are doing damage to this thing. Some of its tentacles seem, you know, twitchy and weird. And uh, Oh, and it also takes uh, hex damage. Oh, alright. Subtract that six. Plus another three for my uh, Radiant Soul. I'll subtract that three. <laughs> All right. It's now the Kraken's turn, and he is going to reel Azure in and bite. Uh, Azure, not only do you take this damage, 16 piercing. But you're also swallowed. Uh oh. Gold they all swallowed. You are blinded and restrained. And, uh. You could still cast that, uh. You could still cast your, uh. When you start taking acid damage, your. Absorb elements? You absorb elements. I, yeah. I don't take the acid damage yet, do I? No. Nope. Not until the start of the Kraken's next turn. All right. <clears throat> well, so, like 28 is my armor class, even with shield. But even if I pop, it wouldn't make a difference. It's killing me right, right. now. Right. At one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you are, you are inside of the Kraken. Okay. And that is his turn. Doesn't he have advantage? Oh, no. Azure. So, while you're swallowed, you're blinded and restrained. Uh, so you can attack, but you have disadvantage. No spells, you're blinded. Say so what? It spells, but it, not if you if you don't. But you can't see anything. I'm curious. Like booming blade require. What does booming blade require? Vocal. Can I do booming blade? You yeah. should be yeah, able you to. Can, you can cast yeah. spells just fine. You yeah. just have to. You just have disadvantage on that. Uh, that attack roll. Well, in that case, fuck it. I'm gonna go pop that. Uh, go ahead and pop another spirit guardian up. What's interesting in that? What's interesting in that a DM ruling <laughs> is that yes, he can't see anything, but it's because he can only see the kraken. Right, yeah. I assume inside of there, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to take that into account as well. That Well, he does that, have his radiant wings out, so those are probably generating some sort of light. Yeah, I mean, does that count on, you know, when it says you're blinded, is that, you know, what does that exactly mean? I mean, he needs to be able to see the target. It means tight. that it means that he's in the Kraken's like stomach acid and stuff like that, you know. So it's yeah, it's like he doesn't he doesn't want to be opening his eyes because he'll get acid all up in him. Well, that's true. I think I think spirit guardians would. I mean, that oh yeah, spirit would work. Spirit guardians, spirit guardians would definitely like do whatever the max damage is for that. Yeah, spirit guardian. Hopping a now. Is uh, is spiritual weapon a concentration spell? It is not. Okay. I should be able to still attack without the bonus action, right? How are you gonna do that one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you can't see. So I, I'm we gonna can't. say I'm gonna say you have disadvantage. Okay. So the disadvantage, my spirit weapon, spiritual weapon first. Yep. All right, so that misses. Go ahead and pop Spirit Guardian at level. Four. All right. I'll put the ore up just because, but yeah, I don't think it's going to make a difference. I know it's. All my action, my bonus action. That is it. My speed is zero. Okay. Bubbly. 
<clears throat> All right, Webley Hexblades curses the team and goes for the Elder's Blast. That's it. Uh, so he gets to add, I think, his. Um, hold on a sec. Sorry. I think he gets to add his charisma bonus to that. Uh, you gain bonus damage rolls and connect your time. Proficiency, Proficiency bonus. bonus. Okay. Uh, so four. Add four to that. And second attack. Nice. Add another four to that. Okay. So eight, 18. Total, yep. I got it. All right. Uh, yeah. Hammerbell, what do you got? So the uh, Guiding Bolt gives advantage? Yes, on the next melee attack. Oh. Or on the next attack. So yeah, you, you're at advantage. I will give that a try. Uh, I don't know if those. I don't know if all those stack. They don't. I don't know. I don't think they would. Yeah, the next attack roll made against this target before the end of my turn has advantage. Yeah, but she already has advantage, and she already has disadvantage. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. I don't. I don't well, think they. I, I think, think they, they stack. Well, in this case, it doesn't matter much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Next. I will try a second swing. Oh gosh! Oh no! <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. All right, roll roll damage on that. You grab you grab one of the tentacles that tried to wrap around you, and you just scrape yourself up against it. So that's oh minus nine. No, I use this. Fairvex. All right. Um. Yeah, let's hit it with another guiding bolt. Okay. So, so plus, an right. plus another three. That's 19 for the radiant three soul. Is and then hex adds another three. So, so 25. 25 damage. Nice. This thing is starting to, you know, it's almost hard to see them sometimes because of all the all the blood that's coming out of the different wounds that you guys are creating and all of its tentacles and its main body. It is now his turn. Oh, well, here's the and question: so... What happens first, the radiant salt, the radiant damage, or my acid damage? Both at the beginning uh, of his turn. The start of the Kraken's turns. It doesn't really matter. As long as you don't do 35 damage with your Radiant Soul. 7, 18. Alright, and then what was that? 66? There a save in there or not? Great damage one. It's it yeah, just right it damage. Sixty six damage. All right, so d six slash roll sixty six. See if that works. Ouch. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Oof. Four elements. Is that a reaction? Yep. Yes. Ah. Fourteen damage. Yep. Fourteen. What I got to do is beat ten on the concentration. On yeah, we'll go with that first roll. What? Oh, okay. That's right. You have advantage on con saves yep. uh, for concentration. Warcaster. Yeah, Warcaster. I only take what? Okay, Four so that's damage. that's he hasn't even gone yet, really. Um, he's gonna go ahead and. see here he's gonna go ahead and tentacle hammer bell all 
Amberbell, you take eight bludgeoning damage. And so I need to he gets multi attack. Uh, yes, yeah. See if you do do your strength or athletics check. Oh, can I break free at all? What was my turn? Am I sorry? So you are restrained. Dang. And rebel. And the second tentacle attack. It's got a range of thirty on this. Go with Webley. Webley, give um, me a uh, strength save. Webley will burn a luck point to reroll. To reroll, uh, Web Web Webley can uh, spend one luck point when an attack roll is made against you. Oh, roll it and roll a d20 and choose whether the attack uses the attacker roll or yours. Whenever you make an attack roll. Uh, when an attack roll is made against you, second paragraph, you second or third paragraph. paragraph. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we did this before, did and, and he rolled a crit 20. So uh, 16, which it? doesn't hit. Doesn't hit, correct. All right. So, that is the end of his turn. Azure. Okay. Well, first off, I'm going to go ahead and use my the bonus action. Use my spiritual weapon outside. Ooh. Oh. 12 does not hit. Ooh, here's something. Let me read it real quick. I'm going to basically use a magic missile. I think I'm going to do six. Read it real quick. Want a magic missile? Oh, hold on. I'm trying to think how... I'm gonna burn six of them. What? Nine? I think it ends up being five missiles if you burn six charges. Because you get three for the first one and then one for each additional. Yeah, so three. Be three eight, for the eight. first one. I'm so, burning six charges. Yeah. And five more. So 8d4. 8d4 plus 8. I'm just going to... You mind if I just go ahead and do 8d4 real quick? Or yeah, yeah. Just do 8d4 and then just add 8. Advanced dice roller. Yeah. Plus 8. Alright, so that's 18 plus 8, plus eight is 26. Yep. All right. You, uh, between that and the blunder, does that count as enough damage to make it, uh, force the regurgitate roll? Because technically that's all by one, yeah. one swallowed creature. And one round. One swallowed creature within one round. How much do you do in the blunder? Technically this is the next round, because Azure goes first in the next round. But let's see if he makes that save. What is that? DC twenty five. DC twenty five con. Because you said it, you said it was yeah. less than the fifty that the adult has. Yeah, yeah, it's thirty five. In this case. What? Ha <laughs> All right, Azure, you get spit out. I feel dirty. That you get you get puked out with uh You in water. <laughs> he still feels dirty. Yeah, I feel dirty. Yeah. You you get puked out and and just this thing looks super sick and 
It almost looks like it's going to turn tail and run. Webley. Uh, yeah, Eldritch Blast. Doo -doo -doo. He still has his hex thingy on there. That's a miss. That miss. Uh, second one. That hits. 8, 9, 10, 12. Oh. It's gone. Oh, sweet. Oh, man. Oh, it's this, thing, this thing thrashes around for a moment. Its tentacles go everywhere as it tries to hold in its own guts and, and just becomes this big dark cloud of blood. Hmm. Did I you notice any... Uh, yeah, did you notice any uh, items or magical items in the tummy? Yeah, we shove that your back in. Yeah, find, I'm uh, find the rest magical of the stuff. myself, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know this thing. This thing has a. Uh, this thing does have something in it. Who uh, wants yeah. to roll? <laughs> Loot the corpse before it, it, it sinks. It, yeah, I was gonna say, except it's not sinking any direction. <laughs> Which one of you wants to roll? Can we use a luck point of Webley roll? Yeah, <laughs> the lucky guy. <laughs> it, yeah, it, this, is not, this is not a bill, uh, available for luck point usage. Okay. Uh, which one of you wants to roll? It's a straight d20 roll. Sure, I'll roll it. Okay, Jim, give me a d20. All right. Here's a d20. Bam. Three, yes. <laughs> okay. You find within this, the Kraken, uh -huh. you find a gem. All righty. And this particular gem shines even underwater even in the absence of sunlight it nice. gives a it gives off a uh just a vibrant light of 10 feet uh 10 feet of bright light another 10 feet of dim even All under right. the water and uh and it looks very fancy and expensive okay we can but examine don't... more closely later don't also yeah. forget that you know, since you killed this thing, uh, one of the and this here, remove all turns, blah blah blah. Get rid of that. Oh yeah, can we use? We can use some of this for parts. So one of the the merfolk who showed you out here. Uh, swims up and, and and is just very glad. You know, he's very, oh, look at you. you you're a Celtic. Uh, that, that, that's amazing. And he's very happy. And, uh, and all the, all the creatures that were hunting merfolk and, and overeating elsewhere with no check on their own population because they were protected by the uh, juvenile kraken they kind of dig deeper into their tunnels knowing you know their their fun ride their free free and fun ride is coming to an end and so i was the thought you were going to say they're all come out and attack <laughs> <laughs> it's their only chance get them no um so the this merfolk says come back to our come back to our town and we'll uh we'll get you the uh we'll get you the the, the pick out of the treasury Right. Sure. Uh, if you don't mind, to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and use healing hands just to get me some extra hit points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you guys want to go ahead and heal up, do that now. I'm going to do my uh, second wind please. in my healing hand. Be fine. <clears throat> How badly torn up is uh, anyone else? Oh, I'm 35 points down. Ew. Yeah, I mean, Bell's Bell's a little bit beat up. Asher's got it the worst. I'm about okay, about half. So I'm good, or a little over half. I'm good now. 
I'll throw yeah. a couple. I'll throw a pair of level two cure wounds at uh, Bell. <laughs> so eleven points on that one. Seventeen on the other. Nice. So 28, 28 total healing on Hammer Bill. Yep. <laughs> okay. Now, you guys go back to the small village inside of the tiny caves that the merfolk live in and uh and there they're offering you you know hey we'll give you this room this kind of this this grotto uh think think ariel's grotto from the little mermaid you know she's got her own little space in there they just push a stone in the way and you're safe from the outside and you're you're you can you can ride out your time there. They don't know what kind of magic you're using. They don't really care. And they they just say, "Hey, you you did this huge thing for us. So we're going to let you after you pick out of our treasury what you want there. We're going to let you uh, yeah. uh just stay in there and you can cast banish as often as as you like and just let us know if you need anything." Do they have any And they bring you guys snacks. Clerics to cast banish to help move this along. Say what? Do they have any powerful enough clerics to cast banishment? Move this along faster? They do not. <laughs> they do not. So so first we're going to resolve the treasure. And then we'll resolve what happens each day as you guys uh, banish out. So this is, this is a good ways into day number two. And we'll quickly cut over to Jin. You know, uh, maybe Webley wonders. You know, I wonder how Jin is doing. And then, <laughs> you know, if this were a TV show or movie, we'd quickly cut over to Jin, who's yeah. uh, who's looking out onto the ocean very stoically, looking for looking for uh, uh, party members, and then shrugs her shoulders and goes back to the bar. Yeah, that's like yeah, okay. <laughs> So Jin, uh, this is the this is the end of day two. So this is where you meet the uh, the captain. Okay, correct. And and, ne and negotiate. All right. Just for for reference. All right. So you guys go back to the Merfolk Lair, and who feels lucky? I'll do one. <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Time. All right. All right, Fairvex, give me a D100 roll with advantage. Okay. Let me see if this will let, let me do this. 18, oh, okay. 64. 64. Let's go with 64. 64. What does it get you? Sounds like a classic strength. Okay. Now roll 2D4. Okay, so you get 500 gold. All right. And, and, now, do we want to continue with Fairvax, or does somebody else want to roll? <laughs> All right, Azure, Azure, give me, give me a D100 with advantage. Thirty-five and five, or thirty-eight and five. Is that? Oh wow! <laughs> so that's that's really you roll a five and a thirty-eight. Yep. All right. So thirty-eight. What does that get you? Oh my bad. Uh, Fairvax, give me one more D four roll. D four. Okay. Yeah. Oof. Oh no! So this is the only roll in the magic table you guys get. Uh, what was that? A thirty-eight? Yeah, thirty-eight. Yep. 
you get a ring of wishes. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Potion of Potion. gaseous form. Potion of gaseous form. Hmm. That's handy. Sort of. Sort Not of. as cool as it used to be. <laughs> it's going in the bag. Yep. <clears throat> All right. And so the rest of your time, uh, you're going to go ahead and just, you know, stay alive. They're gonna they're gonna deliver you some seafood while you're while you're slowly banishing everyone away. So who out of the four of you? Go ahead and move this guy. There are four of you. Who out of the four of you is going to be banished first? I'm going to be banished uh, last before Azure. Okay. I need to keep the water breathing operational. Yeah. Well, I think we we're decided if we we're just going to be Webley or Hammerbell. <clears throat> it doesn't really matter at this point because we're safe. True. I think we were sticking with, with Webley because he had spell abilities, but now it doesn't particularly matter. Yeah, sure. Let's send Hammerbell. Okay. All right. So, you're going to cast it on Hammerbell. Hammerbell, roll me a... Actually, no, because it's... Because it's as your spell, and it's kind of a religious dealing. This is your first time casting Banishment. Uh, it's it's a new kind of connection with your, with your deity, with Moradin. And so... Uh, Azure, give me a d20 roll. Fuck. <laughs> oh! That's either really good or really bad. 19. Okay. Uh... Hmm. How do I want to play this? You know what? I'll play it that way. Um, Hammerbell, you find yourself in a bedroom, but it is not yours. Okay. You look around <laughs> and you see Azure stuff. Oh. Oh, well, there you go. Yay. And, uh... Hey, first time I had a girl in my room. Um... <laughs> <laughs> And you're not even there. Really. I know, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and and so you uh, you, you don't really recognize it because you've never been in Azure's room. But but upon stepping out of the room, you realize you're in the party HQ. Mm -hmm. Home. <sighs> <laughs> and uh, Adabra is there, and she's just like, "Oh, welcome back. You, you're. I never saw you come in the front door. Why would you come from upstairs?" <laughs> She's also dripping some wet. Bed, some silly yeah, she's bed. also soaking wet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so you're there. Nobody else is there. Not even Jin is back. Okay. To that Sam. Okay. So it is now day three. Azure, you can banish somebody else. Bubbly. Bye, buddy. All right. Bye. Give me a d20 roll. That's not bad. All right. Uh, for me. So give me a D6. Scatter die. <laughs> Inside out. Okay. Uh, Webley, you end up... You, you recognize this place, the sights, the sounds, the smells, and you realize that you have arrived at the forge in Phandalin. And okay. this makes sense to you because Azure had created his hammer there. Uh -huh. So this was this was a this was a place of religious 
uh, sanctity to him. Uh, and so it, it's one of the places that he is that that he is tied to religiously and so you are banished to that to that location after the full minute is up of as you're maintaining concentration uh webley has to find his way from Fandolin back to leyland i assume if that's where he's gonna go yeah the immediate thing webley does since he's in Fandolin is goes to track down the guy that we gave the uh, sending stone to because he's in Vandalin, right? Yes, yep. yes. That would be uh, yeah. Toblin Stonehill at the Stonehill <clears throat> Yes. So he goes to the Stonehill Inn and, and A, he needs a room and B, I need the descending stones or sending stone or whatever. And okay. he sends a, sends a message to uh, on the tablet safely back in Vandalin. Okay, Webley, give me a d20, because there's a 5% chance that the message doesn't arrive. So on a natural uh, one, the message doesn't make it. Sweet. Nice, natural 20. Um, so the message fully makes it. You know, at this point, it's a video conference. You know, you're just like, yeah, I totally made it. I'm <laughs> yeah. back in Fandolin. I don't see uh, Hammerbell anywhere, but, you Hammerbell, know. I see but, yeah. The message is, I'm back in Vandalin. No Hammerbell, but. I'm safe. Nice. All right. And uh, are you going to keep that sending stone or are you going to give it back to Toblin? I think I think we may have more use of it if we give, put it, give it in, give it to a Dabra. She okay. has because she has magic resources. I'm going to I'm going to ask him if it's OK if we take that back and as we have use of it he he agrees uh and he definitely says well it's your property you do what you want with it and so okay. you he now just have needs, the i need a room he needs a room for the night to dry off rest up head back in the morning ready <laughs> all right some time has gone by 24 hours later Azure, you're ready to banish Fairvax. Or yourself. You could banish yourself. <laughs> Fairvax, make sure you do water breathing before you go. Yep. Luckily. Yeah. So Fairvax once again casts water breathing. And uh All right, go ahead and give me a D6, Azure. Another three? Really? <laughs> All right, Fairvax. Fairvax, you arrive at the forge in Fandolin. Ah. Okay. And, uh, you know, you, you immediately... What, what do you do? What do you do when you're there? Well, I would... Uh, given that we used the stones previously, I'll go locate uh, the stone and send a message. To Azure, the, where I ended up. Okay, so you find Toblin Stonehill, and he tells you that that uh, Webley took the stone, uh, but he's still sleeping upstairs because it's early morning. Okay. In which case, uh, so so you I'll guys, give a, I'll you give guys him a little bit together. of time to wake up, and then we'll <laughs> we'll send the send the message. Two for two, or two for three. All right. We don't know what the health dwarf's at. Yeah. All right. At this point, at this point, uh, Jin has arrived. So Hammerbell, that evening, Jin walks in, and, and is, is very is very surprised to see Hammerbell there. You know, well, having yep. beat her there, and nobody else. <laughs> What took uh, you so long? Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. so you guys, you guys have no idea where the other has been. Nope. Yeah, we set up a, set up a round of drinks and start start comparing notes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Crazy. See what you missed. 
And we'll, yeah, we'll, you guys we'll had it. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's see what happens to the cleric. Azure, give me a d20. One. One. Oh. Ah. Uh, wow. Okay, Azure. You're you're really lucky. Go ahead and cast Banish on yourself. I do so. He probably ends up at the forge in, in uh, Leyland. Probably ends up in the room. All right. Uh, where is... So, Jin, Hammerbell, and Azure Walking sitting the there drinking. Drinking at their own bar. Webley and Fairvex are in Phandalin. The party is all accounted for. Yay! Hey. And we have a way to communicate. And, and, and you guys have a way to communicate. Yeah, man, there Great. was a whole thing where like there was like all different places that you guys could get transported to, but on a roll of eighteen or higher, I was just gonna make it Azure's bedroom. Since I so so I chose six places. That's why the D six, and uh. I, I I chose six different places that had religious context for Azure. And so uh, one of them uh, on a natural one on that D six roll. You would have ended up in the Temple of Moradin in Neverwinter, because oh. that's where he uh, that's where he he trained. That's where he came up, sure. and uh, and that's where he left. So it's going to be really awkward to to either be Azure or mention Azure's name around that space because uh, they they don't get along very well. Uh, <laughs> there is the Great. statue the statue of Moradin in Axholm. You guys remember in Axholm, yeah, uh, even yeah. Hammerbell and Azure prayed to that giant statue. That's where he got his idea for his axe, or his, uh, his throwing hammer. Um, there's the forge in Phandalin, because that's where he actually built the hammer. And that was a, I believe he rolled like a net, like pretty high on the religion check to forge that. Uh, so there's there was some religious context there. Um, on a four, it was the Room at the Stonehill Inn, where Azure prayed, because the whole first module you guys spent there in the Stonehill Inn, and so Azure spent a lot of time there, you know, talking to Mord and praying to him. On a five, it was the basement of the Wayside Inn, where Mord and reigned supreme over Talos, and and Azure said, "Puny God." Yeah. I thought that was where he lost his virginity. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you ask Azure, there's not too much difference. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, and on a six, Azure's room in the party HQ. So, could have been different, but it wasn't. So you guys all end up back here. So over yeah. the period of the next uh, two or three days... Uh, you guys make it from Phandalin to let me, let me bring Fairvax and Webley. So Jin, why don't you tell the rest of the party what you were up to while they were gallivanting around the elemental plane of water? Ooh, I I totally found our uh, Stanton Tar, the uh, you know Tabaxi, and. Uh, oh, the other end of the porthole took me to uh, uh, Waterdeep, and there was a little bit of a, a dust up in a bar, uh, but that was quickly handled. And the Tabaxi, great cabin, great captain, no problems, no mutinies, smooth sailing. I say we take her next time. Or so you said take her last time too. <laughs> I did. I did say take her last time. As a matter of fact, I was voting for her. Yes. So yeah, I didn't fight any big cool krakens. That sounds awesome. Yeah. I still feel I dirty. Got eaten. <laughs> <laughs> eaten by a kraken? How cool! Yeah. All right. More folks. 
Yeah. That's so, totally awesome. I'm going to give you guys some time to discuss what you want to do with your free time. Because, uh, you know, you, you dealt a major blow to, to the Talos cult. Um, you understand that this was their major base of operations. This is how they were funding things that they were doing in the area. And much like they had tried in Phandalin to create a shrine of Talos, or a shrine to Talos, you've not only stopped them, but you've stopped their ability to fund the resources to try again for a while. So so Talos is, is just been wrecked by you guys and uh and so that 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 gives you a moment's reprieve to to do some things and while you're talking about what you're going to do my dinner plans fell through so i've got to go talk to my wife real quick and figure out what i'm doing for dinner <laughs> All right. i will, uh, I will be back in then? just a few Yeah, wasn't there something bad going on in the Mirror of Dead Men? Yeah. Well, the fact that it seemed like the Cult of Merkel was active in that area. I think maybe that's where we should head out next. Uh, I, don't know. I don't have anything as far as... Well, here's a quick... Is the, the Alchemist Lab is now done, correct? Uh, the Alchemist Lab is done. We're working on the Smithy. So if there's anything that Fairfax wants to get from the Alchemy Lab, we have it now. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, it yeah, was we'll going to be like 10 days or something or whatever, and we've certainly been gone a while. Yeah, we got to double check with uh, with Meth and see where we're at on the construction. Just um, pull it out there. Check the construction. But I think the Alchemist Lab is done, so we do have access to that to keep in mind. Yeah. We have... Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, uh, I'm going to put this. So as far as the uh, party loot stash, I don't know if we're going to be split up anymore. Hopefully we're not. Um, but I was wondering, I was wondering if, because I needed gold and you guys needed gold. So, uh, do you want to say everybody gold. everybody carries around X amount of gold, but we still yeah. I mean, we we should we should each have a portion of the gold on on us, and then we keep the extra in the bag. Yeah. yeah. Or we start, or we secu build a secure, uh, you know, strong box here, and start keeping some of the excess. Yeah. Well, Bill has like fifty nine on her, so she. I don't know if she needs any more. All right. Because uh, I wanted wanted to say that we that we were keeping. Yeah, I was going to say if everybody wants to keep two hundred on your person, that makes sense. So, yeah, put yourself up to two hundred plus whatever you currently had on your person. Okay. And we still have that five hundred we just got. We now we have almost two thousand in community gold as well so um are we gonna go back to our jobs <laughs> oh uh we got a magic you got a magic detection thing right Fair yeah much. i got a wand of magic wand of magic detection and i can cast detect magic okay because we got that gem that might be something more than just yeah shine light yeah i'm pretty sure there's something to something to that um Uh, and it, we already got all the information we can from the cleric lady and the other dude regarding our sixth party member, correct? I think we got as much as we could, yeah. Okay. At that time, wasn't it? never got back from when I brought the um, uh, necklace back to the wizard. I think maybe the wizard might have some more info. But... I think the wizard has more info. Or may have more. Or maybe. Them. May have more. But we... And we don't have a location for the Storm Sworn Major Batty Chick. Uh, 
I'm pretty sure that's true. We do not know where she was at. I'm not remembering at all who she is. <laughs> she, she's the major bad, bad chick for Talos. Feral, feral Eye Storm Sworn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One. Okay. Yeah, she's well, like the cult leader for the area. Yeah, we didn't. She wasn't at the island? Oh, uh, She was not at the island. I'm just trying to think of the big map. We had the lighthouse thing that we don't know what it is as well. Oh, yeah, there could be something on, going on there. We're on the big map now. Someone's back. <laughs> yep, I'm back. Um, so you guys are talking about this uh, this lighthouse here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, were also was there some was there some recent evil thing going on in the Mirror of Dead Men? Or was that was I mistaken? The last thing Yeah, we found somebody with a vegetation or whatever. Yeah, the last thing that you knew about the Mayor of Dead Men was, I mean, obviously there were the rot trolls that you fought down there. Yeah. Arena. Yeah. And uh, and then Hammerbell saw one later on down there hanging out with Slush. And in Phandalin, when you fought the vampire, when both Talos and Mirkul were both trying to kill you at the same time, and then ended up fighting each other as well, the uh the corpse of that vampire had some of the like briars and like weird stuff on him that was very very indicative of that he had been down in the pair of dead men uh just like the vegetation you know some some little things on his boots and stuff like that here just like gotcha you know, definitely from that region he came from there so you do know that the the, the cult of mere pool is operating from somewhere to the south in that Mayor of Dead Men. Right. Uh, we also think that we might want to talk to the... Uh, what's his face? Uh, the guy in the tower? guy in the tower, yeah. Galio Alibrio. Galio Alibrio, yes. Because... The last thing we gave him that uh, measure gave him that the necklace thingy. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, so you definitely want to talk to Galio. Yeah. That's that's for sure. Yep. All right. And we've been gone. We've been gone a certain amount of time. We want to know if our alchemist lab is done. Uh, you've only been gone for about five days, six days. Well, plus two for the trip down there, so eight days. Uh, it would normally, yeah. it would normally be closer to being done, but Azure wasn't there to cast guidance and help out with the building, so it's still, it's still some time. We're already up to uh, the um, uh, forge. I thought the alchemist lab was done. Did we pay for the forge? I thought we did the forge first. We did the alchemy lab first. Yeah. yeah so that's right, because we, we had access to the other for, to the other forge. I could have swore the alchemy lab was done. We started on the forge, so I thought we paid for the forge. Uh, I have not, we have not paid for the forge okay, because we just had enough money for the forge. Oh, okay, that's maybe what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's true. Let's see. I know I wrote some notes down here. So now I'm getting it mixed up. I think, I mean, I, I definitely have down on my notes, you know, bar paid, alchemy lab paid, smithy I don't have down paid. Okay, my bad. Yeah, I want to I wanna say you guys threw money down for the smithy. We'll have to go back and look. All right. Because I don't want. Yeah. I don't I... Want to... 
I don't think so, because last time I remember thinking, oh, we're close to another room, because we had a couple thousand gold. All right. Uh, either way, it would not be done quite yet. We'll have to go back, okay. go back and, and check notes here. Okay. You would think the DM would know, but you know. <laughs> All right. So I was actually expecting, I don't know why I was actually expecting that to take longer than it did. So I don't have a whole lot written. Uh, beyond this point, and it is the end of the second module of this uh, of this series of modules. So you guys did did uh, uh, the Dragon of Ice Fire Peak. That was the first module, and so this ends the second module, Storm Lord's Wrath. Oh. So next session we will be moving into the third module, Sleeping Dragon's Wake. Alrighty. Uh, we uh, just for just for cleanup stuff. Uh, according to notes, we've had a loot of illusion for sale at the Pecu peculiarity shop. Did that? Did that sell? Well, you remember when uh, Aubrey was? Uh, you know, he was in charge of that. And uh, was Aubrey he the, is no he longer was the there. He's gone. Yeah. Oh. So so okay, on the book well, taking... on the book it's still it's still going, you know, it's still there. Uh so you can point it out to Breltora Red Eye, who is the current shopkeep, and she will uh she will look for a buyer. Okay. Did I did I tell you anything about what it was worth? No. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no also, <laughs> suit of illusions. Illusions. Yeah. Also, what is this gem magical? Fairfax can check it out. Yeah, I'm gonna do. Uh, well, pretty sure it's magical, but just to be on this, to be certain, use the wand of magic detection. Figure out what kind of magic it is, and then take the time to cast identify. Okay. Uh, it is a, it is a an aquatic gem of light. It is, uh, it's worth three and a gold. It's just a gem that gives off ten ten feet of bright light, ten feet of uh, dim light beyond that. That's Can still we useful. It? We could sell it. Yeah. I mean, we don't have as much of a need of it because both Azure and I can cast light. But on the other hand, you know. Having a, a permanent light source like that could be useful um, yeah. in, a, in a couple circumstances. Yeah. So it's kind of up to everybody else. I say keep it, but, you know, if we need the money, we can sell it. Okay. Well, right now, assuming... I mean, like I said, assuming everyone's carrying 200, which, by the way, if you are, put that on yourself. We have 1965 gold as not counting your personal 200. Okay. So we really have, you know, 2965, but but we need another 500 gold to f fund the smithy. So that's what I was just trying to come up with that. Well, if everybody drops, if we all drop uh, 100. to 100, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then build up, get the smithy built, all or right. at least paid for, yeah. I'd be okay with that. All right. So you only have 100 gold. Okay. And you want to drop the 2,500 to build the smithy? Yes. Okay. Zero gold in bag. Everyone has. All right. I'm taking off the everyone has personal. So everyone is tracking it themselves. Okay. So we're down to zero gold, except for what you have on your character sheet.
but Smithy is paid. How's business been at the at the HQ? Oh yeah, are we making uh, money in the... Yeah, you guys, you guys have been making some steady money. It's okay. about. It's been. Uh, yeah, let's let's give Adabra some rolls. Everybody, give me a D twenty. And then Jim, you're gonna go twice. Oh, okay. Oh, geez, when did these start? I started, I think. Uh, yeah, Jen's Jen, Jen's up there. Oh, Jen, right. There. Yeah, nineteen twenty-six. Oh, that's right, that's right. Because Asher's D twenty was on his. Where does he go? Yeah. Um. All right. So nineteen, twenty, six, eighteen, and twenty. Holy cow. Yeah, we had a lot, of, a lot of good rolls. Except for yours. I'm just saying, I got everyone home okay. Don't expect much more out of these 90 <laughs> 20s. I'm just saying. Still tired. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, to cover your operating costs and, and everything like that, uh, you're only making at max, you know, 20 gold a night. Well, that's fine. From we're not there, planning on, on raiding that piggy bank. We just wanted to make sure that we're that we're still profitable right now. So so yeah. add these up, add these up, and that's how much gold you made during the time that you were gone. All right, thirty nine and uh, forty five plus six, eighteen plus eighty three, eighty three. Let's go it in the community chest. All right. So we're keeping the gem. Yeah, we're we're gonna assume that that you take care of, you know, Do that that's know just. What the gem is? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the gem, gem was light. just a lighted gem. Oh. All right. So I want to take down notes on, you know, if you guys happen to have the next few days, no no cults attacking. Nothing like that. What is it that you want to do with your time? Uh, back to our jobs, at least for <laughs> sharpening my weapon. Uh, yeah, I'll go back to fix I'll do my some fishing. <laughs> um, actually, just... Hannibal, do you want to run down and talk to the lizard folk? Check in with them again? Because we know there's something ongoing with the mayor of the dead men. Let's see if they know I have Yeah, that's a good idea. Here, but sitting here by herself again. <laughs> yeah. Then again, like, I think she's one of the few that would fully be able to take care of herself. Yeah, she knows the way. Okay. Hammerbell's going to make a trip down to hang out with Slosh. All right. Let's see if anything new or scary. Anything or weird's whatever. going on. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody, uh, let's say Fairvex. What do you want to do with the next couple of days? Um, work with the Dabber getting the Alchemy Lab fully up and running. Um, you know, a little bit more training and possibly get a couple projects started. So anyone going to see Galio? Yeah, and talk to Galio. You know, talk to Galio, see what see what he's been see if he's gotten anything as well as uh chat with him for a couple additional pieces of uh information which he may have access to that I don't. Alright, train with the Dabra, work with Galio. And then if there's time left over I'll I'll do some patrol do some of the work. Okay. I will I will ask Doc throughout the week what he wants Webley to do. Jin. Uh fish and drink. <laughs> fish and, and drink and continue to learn harmonica. Harmonica. 
Okay. And that leaves Azure. I'm going to be working on construction during the day. In the evening at the town's forge, working with their blacksmith, building a relationship with her. But she's selling a lot of our stuff right now, so I need to stick for a relationship. Good. Great construction, working with the town blacksmith. What's her name real quick? I can make a note of that. You know, have it on top of your head. If not, don't worry about it. Uh, do, 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 do. Morticia. No. Uh, Slayer. Uh, Zana Talish? Ah, uh, yes. Zana, Zana Talish. Zana Talish. Glad you found it. I'm actually making a note <laughs> of it now. But yeah, I'm gonna work with her and just talk with her, keep the relationship with her well, because she's selling a lot of our stuff in the town square, so don't wanna piss her off. Okay. Alright, so uh this is this is kind of where I, I've run out of content. <laughs> sure. I have. I apologize. I don't know why I thought this would go longer, but uh, I've definitely run out, and I think it was still a good session. Yeah. Cool. When the first Everybody's session was a long home. time, I thought I was going to die. So. Yeah. 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 Uh, Azure didn't die. There's the the positive. Yeah. Near the Webley. Yeah. That's the neutral. And back home safely. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that could have been ooh, gone a, a lot worse. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do banishment then. <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah. What? Guys, I'm already dead, so fuck it. So that that was <laughs> So that was that was definitely one of the cooler things that we've done is is uh aside from the module go plane hopping and managed to make it home and yeah. and none of that none of that was scripted so you got some very... you got some bottles of uh water from the elemental plane oh. so oh also yeah. uh can bell have at least a short scale <laughs> souvenir <laughs> a piece of a piece of shark yeah it's a giant shark the scale must be big right Mm, maybe or it just has a lot of very fine ones but either way <laughs> yeah yeah shark yeah. scale i mean sharks don't have scales they have uh something yeah, else just like they're... a thick skin yeah yeah, yeah. they don't even have a bone how about, a tooth? how about a tooth you get it you get a big tooth yeah you knocked enough of those out yeah yeah shark teeth for hammerbell yeah yeah shark tooth necklace then um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, when we were when we were checking to see what was in the crack, and probably would have taken a couple uh, alchemically useful ingredients from it, mm -hmm. from what I remember. Get crack and blood. Get cracking. Crack and blood, probably ink. You know that sort of thing. All right, crack and blood for Fairvax. Along with whatever else you could take off a dead kraken, and shark bait, ooh ah, or <laughs> then. All right, so I hate to cut it short, uh, that that's but I, I I really don't have anything else. I'd hate to just string you guys along for another half that's hour. That's fine. So seventeenth. Yes, I should. Yes. Or no? Okay. Yeah, yeah, seventeenth. Yep. All right. Seventeenth. Cool. All right. Thank you for the gameage. Thanks yep. for the game. You guys have a good night. All right. Good night, you guys. Too. Bye.